everywhere you go is going to have things that you like and you don't like. But it's how to make the things that you don't like work. Right. That's what you got to learn. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your host, Frank Delana. Today on the pod, we have NFL wide receiver, one of my best friends. Just asked him to be a groomsman at my wedding, Keyshawn Johnson. Say what's up to the people, Juice Nation. We're getting suited up and booted up. <laughs> I know it, you know the vibes. <laughs> I love it. Key, last time you were on the pod, uh, we were still in the basement, still at the bottom. We're rising through the ashes right now in the studio. The camera crew's here. We got the sponsors here. We got, we got it all, all laid out. What do you think so far? I mean, it's just a different vibe. You know, my boy's blowing up and growing <laughs> up. So, you know, can do nothing but love it. Hey, iron sharpens iron. Um, out of the gate, though, I want to make sure everyone knows that this episode is brought to you in part by the American Pistachio Growers. If you want to perform like the pros, be sure to eat your pistachios. Hmm. I might trademark That's that. That's a little clever. Ooh, <laughs> right? Uh, I love it. Shout out to those guys. Be sure to eat your nuts, kids. Speaking of kids, you know, first weekend of college football really hitting right now. And there's so many things changing in that game itself. And I'm just thinking from a perspective of at the Fresno State game that I watched this last weekend, there was recruits on the sideline. And I think the recruiting game has changed because of NIL, but the original, you know, kind of big three of how cool are the jerseys of that school, how nice are their facilities, and then I think it should be accounted for like what's their game day atmosphere like? What do you think out of like those three? Like you were a recruited guy more than me, at least. Like, what was a selling point for you to come to Fresno State, and what were you looking at as you were going from school to school to school? Uh, to be honest, I was just looking at the culture that you know everyone brought around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I mean, from coaches to players, see how players came out the locker room, see how the envi uh, their environment was in the locker room, and uh, coming here, the reason I chose Fresno State it was like I came to you know a big game. They were ranked. And uh, they're ranked. They're ranked high, you know what I mean, in the nation of all college football teams. And I came out, the stadium, stadium was pretty much sold out. And as I seen that game, I'm like, man, like this would be kind of like dope to play in front of, you know what yeah. I mean? And just seeing other people that I know play at Fresno State, you know what I mean, do certain things that they did at Fresno State. So that obviously inspired me more too as well. I think, you know, like I think definitely a team like Oregon who's known to have the so many uni combos. Top notch. They use that like for sure to their advantage. But at the same time, you look at a school like, okay, Alabama wears the same jerseys constantly. Penn State's another one I always come to mind. Like, they have to wear black cleats at Penn State. They have no logo on their helmets at all. Like, they have nothing at all. But yet, they, they'll get some of the best recruits because their stadium atmosphere is one of the best in probably the world, realistically. Yeah, you know the their wideout game is like a insane, insane game. Everyone, you know, worldwide knows that game just strictly off of like that crowd. You know, what yeah. I mean that environment that it brings, and uh, like going to Oregon. You know, what I mean, like it's a lot of schools that can't compete with their uniforms. And they're at Nike it's their, headquarters. It's the headquarters it's right around the corner. You know, what I mean the man. Phil Knight, he did the whole the, thing. I read the book. Yeah, he's Shoe the, Dog, read that. It's a good one. He's the man. You yeah. know what I mean? When it comes to putting things together and putting the jerseys together, different combinations every week. So right. that obviously is going to inspire some kids that looks into that type of, you know what I mean, that type of deal and bring in, you know what I mean, the swag to the field. Like right. That's, that's obviously going to inspire kids as well. You know what I mean? The shoes you get, the clothes you get. Like well, Nike Christmas, when you're an 18-year-old kid who comes out of high school and you're not used to that, you know, getting free stuff. You used to go to Sports Authority or Dick Sporting Goods to buy your gloves before a game, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. you could get a fresh pair two times a week, and nobody's flinching at you. Yeah. That's fun in itself. There's no question. You get customized cleats that no one in the world can get. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. It's, it's some of the things that they have the perks to where it's not something that you can't get anywhere else. So that brings a different environment to recruiting. You know what I right. mean? You know that there's nothing. If I get these cleats or I get these certain shoes, these certain Jordans or Nikes, or whatever it may be. A lot of kids can't get these ever. So if yeah. I have this one pair, it's a lot of, you know what I mean? It's a select few of kids that just gets these. It's like for right. people that has them. So it's like a, it's a prize. You know what I mean? It's something Absolutely. that, it's something that you just keep with you. Well, I think, you know, one of the reasons I, it doesn't bother me, but like, I think one of the cool things about playing so hard in high school to try to play college is working towards getting those custom gloves and those free, you know, cleats and all that stuff. Like I remember being in high school when they first came out with the logo 
on the like on the gloves, on the gloves. Yeah. that was like the most dope thing i've ever seen in my life and you've seen oregon did it first and then all or the bama others, yeah, lsu now, had a few like now all the other schools after oregon did it and right now all the other schools every follow school the trend it. every yeah. school has it now because it's just something that blew up so big but where did it start you know right. what I mean? it started at nike headquarters started yeah. with oregon yeah so they were the first people to get something like that but now schools are you see how oklahoma's transferring now they're jordan and they're transferring right michigan's transferring now they're jordan so they're getting more recruits strictly off of you know what i mean different perks that they're getting now yeah i mean you know we brought the penn state thing makes you think like what do you think is the most electric let's start with college football state like environment in in, like in the the whole country obviously fresno state they bring the juice they do their thing they have their moments like we i mean when you score that one touchdown against boise that one year and it started fresno state it was crazy it was crazy it was absolutely crazy being in that situation you know what i mean as being someone on the field to make a play and being in that situation was something that you know i'll never forget that moment type of deal yeah so then like going to you know i mean if you're on a recruiting vision you're in an all-white game as in penn state you're at that game that probably be a moment you'll probably never forget so you're like I'm going here. I'm going here. Why not be a part of it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, let me really be on the field and do my thing and be in this environment. I know like Virginia Tech has the enter Sandman. They come out pretty hard. Clemson has like the rock thing or yeah. something. I don't know. I haven't experienced enough of it to like, oh yeah, you got to go here. We've we've played in some games though. We got each other to watch the other team run out. Like, I don't know. Boy, uh, not Boise. Bama had Alabama had a pretty cool like they sang that song the song and, and they walking out through the tunnel. they walking out through the tunnel them. like they, that was that was something that you know what I mean that we looked at as other players like damn like that's that's nice let's that's have nice like, I wish we could have this one day you know what I mean I feel right. like our you know our I mean? ramp as, is hard I was gonna say I feel like as ours now and the more things that they're getting with the little stage set up right. and everything is developing lights. the lights is developing more into something as a school like you know what I mean Alabama or. Oregon or Clemson or whatever we, you know, I mean, all the schools that we just named, it's just right. growing into something more. I, I mean, I got to give props to Fresno State. If I really think about everywhere we played against and looking how the other team runs out and what the energy is on that run out, Fresno State's honestly probably up there in the Mountain West for sure. Number one, not oh, yeah. even close that ramp. And I think as a player, like you see the, like the walk, you come out the locker room, you go by like the red brick thing where it says dog, dog house. house. Like, yeah. And then you start kind of doing like, Floating on air, shuffling because some of the crowds getting you hyped up. That ramps a long ways. Yeah, up once, and down, up once, and down. Once you having a good year and you know what I mean, where you're performing the right, right way, the red wave starts to you know what I mean come out more and more and more. So as you're starting to walk out, those games are getting more and more packed. So you start seeing the more different environment. It starts shifting to something that's even bigger. You know, so you know. Additionally, with college football changing, and I I, I bring up what attracts a crew to this point. One of my original things was the NIL, and during our era, that wasn't a thing. You couldn't make money off this. Sheesh. But I mean, do you think it's cool that it's the Wild West? Like you could anybody can make as much bread as possible. Do you think there should be caps to it, or wh- what do you? What's your take on? It? Uh, I feel like if a guy's performing and a guy's doing everything he needs to do, you know, what I mean, it's it's benefiting him as well yeah. as it's benefiting you know, what I mean, your school that you go to. It's of course, been, it is. It's benefiting everyone in the long run. You know, what I'm saying. So I feel like as a player, if you're out here performing and you're doing all the things that you need to do on the on and off the field, and you get you know what I mean blessed with an opportunity to take a an IL deal. I feel like all kids should be able to you know what I mean take it, and it shouldn't be maximized. Like no. if, if no matter what you're doing, if you're it depends on how you're playing, it depends on how what type of person you are off the field. So if you're doing both of those things in a great way, then I feel like you should be blessed with that opportunity. Do you think that there? So you said there should be no cap. So what's going to happen once you know like an 18, 19 year old kid's making more than like the whole coaching staff? It's just it's part a, of the deal. It's some kids that's doing that now. I know it's crazy. Like it's one kid I can name off my head, the Nico kid from LA. Yeah, he goes to I think he goes to Long Beach now. Yeah, he's a quarterback. He's committed to Tennessee. And oh, like, he made like eight million or something. You like know that. what I mean? Like what eighteen year old kid is? He's not even in college yet. Not even in college yet. And he's making a. He just got, he just made an NIL deal for eight million. The kid that's going to Miami, he just got a deal for nine million. He got offered another. He got offered more money to go to another school or do certain things, and it's like. Yes, it's a blessing, you know what I mean? But right. it also can be it also can hurt you cuz like then you, do you work that you work harder as a young kid, do you know how to work harder when you're getting this money already? Yeah. And I'm thinking then also like if I'm in the Tennessee locker room, knowing that we just had a kid from high school. If I'm in the Tennessee locker room and I've been training here for 4 years, 5 years, earning my stripes, doing my thing, and some kid from high school already is making 8 million on top of coming in, to try to be our leader, our QB one, you think that's going to mess with the environment of like a locker room? 
I feel like it can. It depends on how the kid comes in. The kid yeah. has to come in and just, you know, be humble about his situation and, you know what I mean, move forward and work every day like one of the players on a team. And if you're going to be a leader, your coach is going to see you be a leader, and he's only going to put you as a leader if you're doing the right things. You know what I mean? And I feel yeah. like that's going to be on accountability of coaches and how they hold every player accountable. Yeah. So that I makes feel like, sense. I feel like that's where it'll come, and it's like, you know what I mean? It's like I just seen on the internet – the Ohio State quarterback. Right. You know what I mean? He just bought his whole team. He said, week one, I want all you guys, I want all of us to look nice. If you guys take the offer, I would like to, you know what I mean, buy all you guys suits for the first game. That's awesome. That's a leader. That's a leader. You know I mean, that's a leader taking advantage of his NIL deal to his team. So he's holding, you know what I mean? He's, it's, it's, he has an accountability, you know what I mean? Right. And that's, that's the dope part. If some people see things like that and see the leadership in that way, then I feel like they'll buy in with that player just as much more and not think that he's just feeling like he's hot, you know what I mean, the hot yeah, man on yeah, campus yeah. because of his NIL deals. It also makes me think too, from the perspective of like, okay, let's say you were in college right now. What, who would you want to sign with? Just like, yeah, I mean, Nike, like, Adidas, like well, all, all those. No, like, of course you could do that, but like, okay, think locally. Like, who, who? I mean, because a lot of like, there, I know there's all these chicken shacks down south that they're signing kids to. I seen that IHOP signed a couple O linemen. Hooters signed some dudes. Like, who would you shoot your shot at, Key? To be honest, just for the just for the Fresno State and me going there, I would probably go shoot at Doghouse first. Yeah. Like, just to have the Doghouse under my belt and feel like... Try-tip hey, sandwich you, commercials and shit. You know what shit. I mean? That would be probably something to be... That's a legacy to have. Oh. You know what I mean? I had the Doghouse grill to know right. what goes with the school. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, we walk out the tunnel and you see Doghouse on the side. What we eat after every game. Yep. So it's like, okay, cool. If I was able to have that endorsement deal or have the NIL deal to where I can... Instead of our coaches, something supplying the game, the food after the game, maybe right. I could do it sometimes. You know what yeah. I mean? And no, it creates opportunity. And like, you know, one thing I know you're experiencing, you've experienced in your time in the NFL. I mean, even in college, it's playing, being on the roster, being on the travel squad, things like that. It is physical. It is mental. It gets sometimes, you know, it's a numbers game. It could get political. It could do all kinds of things. And I think one thing the NIL thing does kind of do is like, you got to learn how to sell yourself both to coaches, to the program, to the culture. You could kind of use this like as a little bit of a, a leash for leverage at this point to where if you're 18, 19 years old, maybe you're not the star on the team, but maybe you're actually a really good, well-spoken dude, or maybe you're a good dude in the community and you link up with someone. And, and I think another thing too is like a lot of people, I'm not, you know, I'm, I have a lot of people trying to get recruited these days coming to me asking like, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Like I had my son listen to an episode of bring the juice. He liked what you said that. And you know, kind of a, a spin off of that is like, you need to sell yourself. Sometimes some people think I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to score a touchdown a game and they're going to come find me. Like sometimes you got to email a coach first. Sometimes you got to reach out first. You got to be the one who engages in the conversation or a business deal or with a coach or whatever. And you need your voice to be heard. And like, you can't just be a voice though. You got to obviously be able to back it up, Yeah. but it gives you some opportunity. I feel like in my recruiting process, I wasn't, you know what I mean? I had to sell myself to start getting a recruit, you know, right. and getting schools to come look at me doing this and doing that. Like my brother, uh, my brother had an injury in college and uh, he had to sit out for a year of football. And yeah. At that time, my recruiting process wasn't <clears throat> very high at the time. You know what I mean? I was just... It was slow. It was slow. I, I grew, hit a growth spurt late. So my brother, he came in, you know what I mean, at that year. And he was like, man, I want to be more a part of football right now while I have to sit out this year. Right. And I'm like, well, we're both thinking, like, what can we do? And I'm like, man, I'm not getting recruited very heavily. Like, he was like, after every game, I'm going to make, like, you know what I mean? I'm going to start making your highlight tape. Right. So he started making my highlight tape. So... After the first half of the season, he made my, you know what I mean, half season. Uh, right. First highlight, six games. Yeah, first six first games, game. you know, highlight tape. And uh, from there, that's when I feel like the recruiting process picked up when my brother sent my, 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 my highlight tape to every school. Like all schools, he sent it to every school. There was not probably one school on the list that my brother didn't send that to. Got the emails. He figured it all out. And that's when my recruiting process started picking up right. after that point. So then it was like, okay, I sold myself. So yeah. at that time I had to learn, like, you know what I mean? It's not always what your coaches are going to do. It's not always what, you know what I mean? Someone else is going to do for you. You got to sometimes figure it out on your own. 
So when you say selling yourself, I'm just, th- you know, that was from high school. You came to college, you proved yourself, you performed enough to get drafted to the NFL. I know you've been in the Arizona Cardinals locker room, the Philadelphia Eagles locker room. You've been in the Niners locker room. You're in the Falcons locker room. How is that still that process of like, you still got to sell yourself at this point. The NFL is so competitive. There's, there's good dudes, but there's only so many spots. That's part of the game. What do you? What would you say is your biggest thing on how you're going to try to separate yourself from the competition? And come in and be, no matter the position I'm in at the time, you know, come in and be a leader. Right. Like I've played at all levels now. Like some, you know, what I mean, some guys are still going to come in younger than me. They don't know the ins and outs of the NFL yet. They don't know how to be a pro on and off the field yet. So for me, you know, what I mean, it's either it could come by helping younger guys. You know what I mean? Be more of a pro. Just right know how to like I had to learn how to take care of my body after you know what I mean in the off season like teach some kids that you know what I mean or you know what I mean just work with the team in all type of ways that I can you know separate myself just not on the field but as a leader in the room as well so you know in this NFL experience so far what would you say you've taken away the most being the vet being the leader you gotta just be available man like yeah. That's one of the main things. And it's like, okay, you got to hold yourself. Like, it's time now that you have off, that you don't have your college coach pushing you all summer or, you know what I mean, during the time that you have off. You have to know how to, like, time, have your own time management. It's not like, okay, cool, I'm going to go away for two weeks and go home and not sit on your ass, do nothing. Yeah, yeah just work can't. out for, you know what I mean, go out there, catch some passes, do whatever. But now it's like, okay, cool, I have three months off. You know what I mean? Before I get back into it, you can lose yourself in three months. You know what I mean? If you're not doing the right thing. So, now it's like you got to know how to, you know what I mean? Like I say, once back again, the time management. No one want to tell your friends you don't want to hang out. Want to know that you're not going out. Not, yeah. Want to know when you got to be somewhere. Like the time management, doing everything. So that's what comes with it. That takes a huge sense of just accountability within your internal self, I feel like. Yeah, and being an adult. Like, you know what I mean? Like now you're an adult. It's not like you, in college you were an adult as well, but you still kind of get baby. Yeah. I feel like you still have some sheltering in that way, just from coaches being on you, the way you look at it. Now it's a business. Yeah. Once you get to the next level, it's a business. So if you are going to go do whatever you're going to do, the coach is not going to be there calling you unless you're, you know what I mean, a first round top one picked and they, they're they relying on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you're replaceable, then they're going to let you just be replaceable. Wow. You know what I mean? So, you know, being in this variety of locker rooms, what is it like? Has it has I, has any of these locker rooms, any of these franchises you've been with, has the culture stuck out from one of them? Like, or like, hey, they do this well, or like, oh, those fans there are crazy, or I like the way they operate. Any of anything like, or are all the teams pretty much a mishmash of the same with different logos. Yeah, it has. You know, I mean, it has the pros and cons. Every team, no matter what, everywhere you go is going to have things that you like and you don't like. But it's how to make the things that you don't like work. Right. That's what you got to learn. You know what I mean? And you got to beat those odds and whatever you don't don't like, you got to beat the odds in it. And you know what I mean? Go to work at anyone. In any business that you're in, any company or any something, it's going to be probably something that you just don't agree with. Yeah. But what are you going to do? You no, can't. You, you can't. It's... Yeah. Well, nobody... I mean, nobody's ever going to agree with everything, too. Like, I feel like you got to have that balance there. And I think everyone has their line of like, ah, we don't agree on this, but it's okay because we get... He's a good person. Like, yeah. nobody's perfect nobody's going to be the exact match of you which is fine it's okay to me it's almost better to like be able to talk things out as adults and have a sense of respect for their opinion and all that but you know it's hard because like essentially you're in a profession where it's it's as you're getting traded company to company it's not like you're getting like like yeah you're still yeah. playing football yeah you're still running routes you're catching footballs you're scoring touchdowns like you still got to block you got to do all these same things but you're you're working you're not just changing teams you're changing companies like imagine you're a car dealer and you started off at chevy but they said hey we're gonna dish you over to ford and ford's like nah you're going to nissan and nissan's like oh you're at lexus now yeah. but then you go back to toyota yeah like that ain't that easy of a deal to it's transition. Not, Everyone's got their style and their metrics and shit. Every, every team has their style, you know what I mean? Different things that they go by, you know what I mean? A different culture that coaches bring to it. The different things that coaches like to see. All coaches don't like to see the same thing. No. So, or else, you know what I mean? All The league will just be just the same. Every team will be the same. So there's different offenses you get into. Right. You know what I mean? There's just different cultures that you're getting into. Different things that coaches want to see. Some coaches push you more to be a blocker. Push you yeah. more to 
You know what I mean? Run deep down man, the, whatever. Deep man push you more to run down the field, no matter what. Finish every play with the running back. It's you know what I mean. All coaches, I feel like bring different coaches. They all have their thing. I get that. But I feel like as a player, if you bring yourself every day to work and you know that you need to work hard and do what you're gonna do regardless of what your circumstance is, I feel like you'll beat the odds somehow, some way. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I like it, Q. Yeah, I really like it. I really freaking like it. God, I you know. It just makes me think, like, between all the franchises, all the things, like, you got to separate yourself from the rest of the pack. And it's hard because the game of football is also, it's a ticking clock. Like, me and you have talked about it. Football ends someday for everybody. In college, you know when college is over because your eligibility, it, 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 it dries up. And, you know, we, we know dudes who we've played with who, are like, some dudes try to still make it to the NFL for five years and they haven't played since. And, like, mm -hmm. they're trying to hang on to that dream they're trying to keep chasing greatness which i'm never going to hate on but it's slim numbers it's it's hard to do in this league man the nfl is a hard business like you know the nfl stands for not for long yeah so a lot of people that beat the odds of playing for a certain amount of time you know what i mean that's a, a blessing you know what i mean regardless it's a blessing that you got to play college football it's a blessing that you you know what I mean? Got to be on the field with certain people. It's a privilege. You know what I mean? Like, still to this day, I played with Larry Fitzgerald. Like, so I'm saying, you lined up next to Larry Fitzgerald. He's known, you know, one of the best. One of the goats. Regardless. Yeah. What anyone debate say. He's in the debate. In the debate of the best receiver ever. Yeah. And being able to, you know what I mean, regardless of, say, how long my career is. Yes, I played with some of these dudes. Right. Like, DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. You know what I mean? A friend of mine. But. Play with him, Chandler Jones. Like you know, what I mean, it's and the list can Chan. the list can go on and on. You know what I mean? Like there's play Kyler Murray. Like right, right now, up and you know what I mean, up and coming even more. Like Good, all these, nice little contract. You yeah. know what I mean? The James Conner, his different stories. Like it's I play with different levels of players, so it's like I'm already blessed. You know what yeah. I mean? To be able to do that, to be able to say that I was drafted to my kids, or you know what I mean? No matter. What it may be, I, I'm blessed. Who but. is who's like? I know we've we've brushed on it. And like I've 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 you've told me the stories, but who's like the dudes that are still in your corner that you chop it up with that are like, hey, this guy's influencing me as a professional, as an athlete, because it because your back's against the wall some days and yeah. some days you're on top. You know how it is. Yeah, uh, I still have. I mean, a lot of my friends strictly from Arizona. That's where I spent the most time. Obviously, right. And yeah. A lot of those dudes, you know what I mean? Chandler Jones, like I said, DeAndre Hopkins. It's, you know what I mean? So we can list all, the, all yeah. of my friends that and I've had. And they have their adversity too, man. Like, we can list all of my friends that I've had, you know what I mean, that's played at that team. The people that I met in Philadelphia, you know what I mean? Devontae Smith, Quez Walking, Jalen Rigger, like all these dudes still, you know what I mean, hitting me up. Still, you know what I mean, pushing, tell you to push, you know, right. days that you might be down there. Checking in. And days you, you know what I mean, you see them might be down there if something happens, you know what I mean? You, you check on them so it's like a it's a likewise thing but one of my biggest like i got a in philly i met travis fogum and met you know john hightower two dudes like that's still battling to get st stability in the league and those are two of my like good friends that we talk all the time i love that yeah all the time it's i mean of course there's going to be that mutual respect of like hey i know you're going through it i'm going through it let's i say iron sharpens iron all the time on the show like yeah. it is it is one of those situations and uh, it grows into a beautiful friendship. Yeah, and I tell you, it's like they like literally. We was in the Eagles. I was on practice squad. Uh, Travis was on practice squad. Uh, John was on practice squad. But it's like, man, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do different to make ourselves get in a better situation? Right. You know what I mean? What are we gonna do? So we was having conversations as the three of us. Like, bro, we gonna go out here at practice every day and kill. And yeah. Whatever goes on from there, like go from there. We on this team right now. Us three. Let's go kill. You know what I mean? Let's go make our own receiving core today real quick. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we pushed each other to a, a different level. And, you know what I mean? Coaches see that. You know what I mean? As, right. as the time grows, coaches see that. And so I got up and played at the, you know what I mean, at the end of the year. Oh, I was there. Yeah, I know. A little playoff game versus yeah. Tom Brady. I seen it. You know how it goes. A little, a little hit stick on <laughs> kickoff. I see it. You know how it goes. I uh, I mean, you got to control the controllable at the end of the day. Like, it, it's tough. But at the same time, like, you could wake up every day in the morning and feel some type of way or things not going to go in your way. And it's like, dude, it's no matter what you're doing, you're going through something and you got to, you got to be able to say, I'm going to go, I'm going to put in as much work as possible. I'm going to go to bed at night and sleep like a baby because I knew I didn't leave any stone unturned. I did my job. I took care of my body. I got right. I'm a good man. I'm a good father. All this yeah. like you, once you could do, once you could check those off, like 
That's all you could do. You, you can't, can't be you, mad. You can't you know be mad. I mean? That's you can't what I'm be saying. mad at your situation no matter what. If you know that you went out here and literally did everything, made the most of your opportunity, made right. the plays when the ball came your way, made the plays when you got to tackle somebody, made the plays when. That's what I'm saying. Whatever it is, you know what I mean. If you go out there and you make that play and you know that you did everything that you can do. You will be okay with yourself right. at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. no matter how long your NFL career is, like you'll be fine with yourself because you're like, I know I had days where I was, you know what I mean, top notch. And yeah. days that you're not top notch, you're like, man, I know I didn't have a good day today. So now you now you're thinking about that going into the next day. Exactly. Now you're letting that be a train of, you know what I mean, bringing you down, bringing you down, bringing you down. So when you know that you're going out there every day and you're giving your you're doing all you need to do and making your plays and you know what I mean, a coach can never bring you up in film or nothing like that, that you're being lazy or anything like that. Yeah. And You'll be fine with yourself. I trust me. I could not agree more. You'll have to. You'll be able to live with the decisions that they make at the end of the day. Exactly. And that's where like the whole business side comes in, and it it's a uh, it's not easy because you you're like, damn, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing this. I'm it's doing the that. It's like it's, the it's timing. The timing. It's, it's a numbers, the numbers game. There's all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? It's all different things. Let's say for instance, that we have right. You got all these franchise D linemen. You got the franchise. You got three franchise receivers, you know right. what I mean? You got three dudes that's Hall of Fame type players on your yeah. team. If you go out there and do what you're going to do, you can't beat that battle sometimes. No. So you can't really be mad at yourself that you can't beat that battle. No, and you can't I mean you get like there's it's it's a double-edged sword like there's like you said there's Hall of Famers on the one side of the thing where they are already proven and you can't you can't you can't have 7 years of experience mm-hmm. in one day. It doesn't work. And then at the same time as a program, as a business, because that's all the other companies, they might have just invested into a first round, second round, whatever thing. Well, they put money up and they're like, let me see what I can do with this investment. Yeah. So they're going to, again, give them a little more benefit of the doubt on things. That's just how it's, the business it's, side it's, goes. It's BS, it's, but like it's That's just the business side of it. It's the business side of it. Business side of it. You know and, like, and I leave that side to, you know what I mean? You got to leave that up. As a player, you got to leave that up to the building, whatever building you're in, whatever owners, GMs, whatever it may be. You got to leave that to them. Well, you business is business. That. And, uh, if you have a business, Fresno First Bank is where you should go for your banking business. Fresno First Bank is a local bank to Fresno and to the community. They have a strong connection with business owners and to help them grow and succeed. At Fresno First, they are never too busy for you. When you walk in, they give you a handshake, a head nod, a high five of, hey, did you see the dogs win last weekend? Or, hey, did you listen to the last episode of Bringing the Juice? Whatever it might be, uh, the personalized of the customer experience. And they're going to treat you like family. They're always going to take a business approach to what you need. And uh, Fresno First is the place I would go if I'm if I'm handling business. And you know, I know you mentioned in the NIL dealer you would go to Doghouse. Well, I would argue you should go to Dervos Deli because they are the elite sandwich in Fresno right now. I still got you know I got the cup, but I still got to go try. You got it the he's got the cup. You know, we man. both got the cup right now. Shout out to Dervos. Yeah. Um, but Dervos Deli, they I, I keep rabbing about the chicken sandwich. Maybe we got to get one today. I don't know before you leave town. But like, they have this juicy chicken sandwich. They got burgers. They got fresh ingredients. Nice little salami sub. Like, they got something for whatever mood you're feeling. Because sometimes you go in and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm lo- I'm feeling a real nice just deli sandwich right now. Maybe like a like a like a hot pastrami yeah. or something like that. But other times you switch it up. You're like, you know what? I was feeling it, but I look at the picture of the burger in the corner and it looks really good. So Dervos Deli else? is diverse yeah. like that. I'm gonna go. You know, I'm gonna have to try it out. All right, you heard it for you here first. Check out Dervos Deli, people. Key. <clears throat> you know, as one of my good friends, I've seen you grow as you've seen me grow. But one thing, now that I'm getting older, I mentioned before, early on in the pod, getting married vibes. I'm getting married. Yeah, yeah vibes. But you're a father, right? You're, you're you've been a father for a minute now, and. How much has your life changed since you started becoming a father? And why? So it was my first year in the league. Yeah. Um, I had my daughter. Right. And, uh, you know what I mean? The day I had my daughter, I had practice. Wow. You know what I mean? So we get to going, waking up early in the morning. I call my coach. I'm like, you know, I'm on my way to have my daughter. You know what I mean? I have the daughter. I have to go back to work right after. So I had my daughter at 1228. At noon, at noon, night? Noon. Noon. 1228. Lunchtime. Lunchtime. I had to be back at the building at three. Uh, so then from there, I'm like, okay. I just didn't kind of know 
how to play my parts with being in the league yet, you know what I mean? And dealing with the family and the league aspect. Mm. So it was a hard transition into being a father at the same time being my first year in the NFL. So it was a harder, it was more of a harder transition. But now I know like, as time went on, now I know how to kind of like manage, you know what I mean? Everything and not let certain things affect me as a parent or as a player, you know what I mean? Certain ways and certain things go, but you know what I mean? It's been nothing but a blessing. And, uh, I just look at it as, you know what I mean? Just go to work, make sure I take care of that. Cause then that's the only way I'm going to be able to take care of my daughter. Right. So I got to look at it as that. Would you say, you know, to the other dads out there who are balancing a job sport or a job in a job in fatherhood, essentially. Yeah. Like, it's hard for you because you can't you can't call into work and say, "Hey, I can't be there today. My daughter's sick." Like mm-hmm. that's not really the conversation you can have. Yes. But in it, granted, like don't get me wrong, like you also do have a period of the year where you, you're available, yeah. like you, you're flexible on things. So there, there is give and take to that. But I mean, have you? Do you think like? I know you've overcome some adversity. You could bounce from team to team to team and team. And like, that's not easy on being a father because obviously you were in San Francisco a couple months ago. That's right. That's close to home. It's a driving distance. You're currently, as we're recording this in Atlanta, that's a couple of flights away at this point. Yeah. See that. And that's what I'm saying. That's the hard part as right. pretty much as, you know what I mean? Just being a parent in general in this sports industry, like, Knowing that it's times where you got to be gone and be away from your kid and you're not very, you know what I mean, available to her at the time. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean, that can play effect on you as a player if you don't take it the right way. So now I kind of have to look at it as in like, I'm doing this to help her life as well. You know what I mean? Help have the fun later on in life. Help have, go do all the things that we want to do when, when she's a little older. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I got to look at it as that instead of taking it as man i'm away from my kid for this certain period of time like i gotta look at it as a positive thing to where perspective it's a perspective i gotta look at it as a positive way to where i'm like okay well i'm only doing this to you know what i mean really develop you know what i mean develop more help your family financial freedom for for us absolutely you know what i mean and, totally or, you're chasing the bag like, I'm, chas- go- I'm chasing the bag i'm chasing the dream that i wanted to do as well but i'm also chasing you know what i mean setting my kids up for something you know what i mean and setting my daughter totally. up to where we're not. We're never will be in a situation where we're struggling, or we can't go to the park, or we. I mean, go get ice cream, or we can't go. You know what I mean? Go do, do something. Do something that's fun. You know yeah. what I mean? I want her to be able to experience some things that I couldn't experience as a young person at certain times. Like you know, my mom did a tremendous job, did Absolutely. everything well. You know what I mean? But it's still times that we weren't in the same situation that I'm in, and I want to be able to only make it better for her, let her live a better life than I did, and I lived a pretty damn good life. <clears throat> I love that key. What is like, I mean, we've been talking, we've talked business a while. You're talking family now, like the league's not going to last forever. What, have you thought about eventually, like what, would you ever have a, do you have like a core investment you think would be badass or like a business you'd want to open or something along those lines? Uh, I have have a couple of things up my sleeve that I think that I, you know what I mean? Just everyone has gems, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But mm-hmm. some I are think, hidden, some are hidden. Yeah. Some are hidden. I think certain things that I can do can, you know what I mean? Help more with recruiting, help more with, you know what I mean? Giving kids the time management within yeah. all within working out. And I played, I got drafted. You know, yeah, like, you know, I've started in the league. Like I played at every level. So if you have this dream, I can only help kids to show them what, you know what I mean? What it takes. And I can help them for things that I didn't know at a younger age. Yeah. I can give to them. Absolutely. Like at that younger age. No. And I, I mean, I don't have the experience you have in at, especially in the NFL, but like, I even think like I've personally started helping kids with getting from high school to even have an opportunity to the NFL. Like, dude, I mean, not to the high school to the NFL, high school to college because you showed the, you know what I mean? As for you, like you yeah. show what it takes to, you know what I mean? Walk on out of school and work your way up to getting a dude. scholarship to playing, right. To doing all the things that, you know what I mean? Some kids might have to take that path. Right. And so it's like, like, I can show you what hard work takes, exactly. what it takes to do this. Like I can only, you know what I mean? I can tell you. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's going to be days that you're going to be like, do I really want to do this? Do yes. I not? Because you're feeling like some things aren't going your way, but Absolutely. it's like, what are you going to do? You're going to wake up or and give up or are you going to wake up and grind? It, so it, you like, have two options. You I two mean, options. you're getting better, you're getting worse. And like, it's tough because you have, you have those days, especially when you're doing everything right like we talked about and it's just not going your way necessarily or the phone's not calling or you're not getting those reps that you wanted like mm-hmm. 
that's where those are the days where it's like, okay, do I really want this? Do I really want to go through this yeah. hell? But there's a lot of people that's been, you know what I mean, that has the best stories. Yeah. That's been through situations like that. So it's like So I started a podcast. You, you know what I mean? I got like, I got stories, but you like, got the stories, so you know what I mean? Like it's like how how do I tell them? Right. You know what I mean? And this is a way for you to tell your stories or help sure. you know what I mean, or help kids learn from the people that you met throughout your journey, <laughs> tell their story and you know what I mean, let every kid know that it's not always green. No, like, no, not at all. Everything wasn't always green. I didn't start off, you know what I mean, at Fresno State, the best player. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I had to work to develop to being one of the best players on our team. I had to work to develop to being a leader. Like, you know right. what I mean? To getting the respect. Like, it just yeah. didn't start from day one. No, no. Once you I get know there, that. high school starts all over. You're not, your high school stats, your high school. You're just all, a number once you get to college, yeah, man. You got to read. You got to read. They don't care how many stars you had, yeah. where are you from, any of that. It starts like, over. It starts right over. Yeah. And it's it's hard. And like, again, that's one of the reasons I have the pod is because it's just a platform to really just let you discuss that. Like, Hey, I, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't always a NFL wide receiver. Like this is where I started. This is how I progressed. Like dudes come on with stories. I mean, Olympians have come on. Like we had, we went to the fight to watch Jose Ramirez a couple yeah. a couple months ago when he came on the pod and he talked about his journey. I was sitting here literally interviewing him and I'm like asking him questions as if I'm just like, like it wasn't even looking at a paper. There was no structure. It's just like, damn, you you're overcoming adversity. Like, and that's how my pods are now. Like the better I'm getting at them, the more experience I'm gaining. It's like, dude, like nobody, nobody wants to hear, you know, like, yeah, of course I'd like to ask you like what it was like to score a touchdown in the NFL. Like yeah. I, it was awesome. It was amazing. It was a dream come true. It's amazing. You have plans. What you going to do when you score a touchdown, but all those plans go out your way when, cause you're so excited. And it's a dream that you always wanted to do. Right. You know I mean? So, but, but like people, like, I think they could, like, that's awesome to hear. And it's a great platform to discuss those things, but it's also, I think a hundred times better platform to discuss like, Hey, it's mentally hard to go through this. Like, it's not the easiest thing in the world. I'm a man who's working for a company where I'm getting bounced around, not just from like office building, office building, yeah. from freaking state to state. one side of the United States to the other side of the United States, from London to the Bay, baby. Yeah, like right. we're getting after it and it's not the easiest thing, but like, again, it's just an opportunity for people to chop it up. And I have yet to have an athlete come on here that had a bad experience. Like at least that they told me about, mm -hmm. like people are just like, dude, this is dope. Like nobody's, nobody's doing yeah. this right now. And I like this, I don't say this level, but like, you learn this direct. You know what I mean? Everywhere you move, or you know what I mean, from state to state that you have to move to, or from place to place, like you learn different things. You know yeah. what I mean? There's always something more that you can learn. Like you learn how to deal with different coaches. You learn how to deal with different players. Like it's players from all over the, you know what I mean, all over the world. It's right. players from everywhere. It's coaches from everywhere. So different back backgrounds. So it's like you're only developing a skill for yourself that's gonna. I feel like. That can help you after football when right. you have to get into, you know what I mean, the business side of it. You know what I mean? Different well, staying things. a role model, man, yeah, yeah, like in the community, model, like, all that. Doing all that stuff. So it's like you're developing a skill that some people don't really think about. Right. And that's only going to help you later on that if you take it the right way. Yeah. I mean, being a competitor yourself, Key, like I know you, you've you been using the iron sharpens iron, bringing the juice and all that. But in your journey in the league, like who's the – not the league even – in your journey as an athlete, who's the biggest competitor you've ever been around? Like, damn. Biggest competitor. Okay. Buda Baker. Buda Baker. Yes. I'm going to give him. He's the number one competitor that I ever played with. Dude's just hungry. The, like, like he has. he's never tired. Yeah. Like, the man is never. Like, you can never say, okay, Buda was tired on this play. Right. He's always going to be going 110 miles per hour. Like, it don't matter if it's the first play of the game or it's the 90th play of the game. Like, he's going to be out there running 100 miles per hour. Mm. And I feel like that's why the things that he's doing now are starting to show even more. Because it's like, if you go watch film, you're going to see 32 when he was in his old number three now, like, you're going to see him running around crazy. Yeah. I have another one. Like, you know what I mean? He's uh, DeAndre. He, DeAndre, he's an ultimate competitor. competitor. DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, he's an ultimate competitor as well. Like, he doesn't expect himself to lose when it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, you know right. what I mean? Never. As no no, no one should. But I'm going to say his his will into being like, okay, yeah, like, you can't mess with me. Right. It's different. Like, wow. he, like, yeah, his, like He just walks this demeanor that's totally different. It's different. Like, yeah, you, I'm like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like if you go watch some of his old things, when he tells people, like, I fear God, like, I'm, he's different. 
Wow. He's different. Wow. Yeah. So who's the best competitor? All right. Now, not say that you know personally, but like the ultimate competitor in sports history. I don't know. That's any tough. sport. Any sport. I don't any know, sport. That's tough. There's a lot of them. I can't give one. I mean, I can't like, give, I ain't play like, you know what I mean? You see certain things when you play with certain people. When you play with certain people, you're like, you that's see different. That, you see and, that's and the some, ultimate competitor. And some people, they rise to the occasion in a big situation, and it's like, damn. Like, yeah. But I'm a damn sure competitor, too. Like, I don't like to lose in anything. Key, I I, I was so, sitting at the Fresno State game this like, weekend, and I said, like, I love the Young Bulls. Yeah. I sat, I was sitting between George Helmuth and Marcus McMarion, and I said, dude, I said, None of these dudes are touching the key right now, bro. Like, yeah, I don't like to lose. Like, you don't you know like I mean? to lose, but like you also have this trait about like you're you like to go into takeover mode. And if we need a win, if you need a win, win like, throw me the ball. Like that's let's go, let's go do it. And the best players, I, mean? I feel like they want like if you don't want to rise to the occasion in those situations, then you you really aren't that dude. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Sometimes it's not even being. Like some people could say cocky, arrogant, whatever. Like I was never. It's confident. I was just confident in my game. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, cool. Let's go be what we're supposed to be. Let's go right. do what I'm supposed to do. So, coach, like, believe in me and I'm believing you to call this play, please. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, let's yeah, do it. Exactly. It's a two way street. Let's do it. I mean, I think. Like the Boise State play. I coach the boy. He, I told him, can he the please. The bomb? Yes. The one you took your helmet off and got the penalty after? I told him, can he please call this play? <laughs> like, please call the play. Like, call this play, please. I'm going to score. And. I'm going to tell them that the game's over. Yeah, yeah it was Literally. That was wild. You know what I mean? That's kind of like, you just got to have that dog in you some, at certain points. You know what I mean? And, and if you have a coach to believe in you, that comes, you know what I mean? That comes with time. That don't just happen overnight. You no. know what I mean? That came with that came with time. It came with me, you know what I mean? Working and doing certain things that I had to do. <clears throat> Keyshawn Johnson's got that dog in him. Let it, let it be known. Yeah. 19 had the dog too. He was a little feisty little dog out there. Get out of here. Don't be out of pocket. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one more question I want to ask you. Oh, all right. Are you on TikTok? I got one. All right. But I I'm more a watch it than I So you're you're a talk you're a ticker, not a talker. Yeah, yeah. Right. I guess yeah, I guess that I guess you could say. So you that. know, I'm trying to jo- I'm trying to grow the content. So I'm not yeah. much of a I'm more of a talker than a ticker. Okay. I post shit, but I don't look at it. You don't look at it. I look. I look. I don't, yeah, I look. It looks good when you're like on the toilet and all that. Like you know, it passes time. <laughs> yeah. It honestly is addicting. You just got your thumb motion is just you're going. You're like, it's going on. Whatever. And on and on. Whatever. Yeah. You don't like it. Er, er. Yeah. But I just saw one today as I was. I don't want to say as I was driving, but I was at a stoplight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this guy said, "Would you take?" 15 million dollars right now but once a month for the rest of your life you had to go heads up with derrick henry at any given moment so either take 15 million you could take right 15 now. million right now but it's the contingency that you have to derrick henry's gonna hit you like downhill a gap once a month for the rest of your life you just have to eat those for a while I'm a competitor. I don't think he. I, I, hey, I'm coming in well, that hole. I'm a medium in that hole. It's, it's supposed I mean? to be when you don't understand it. So the guy's case was like, it might be when you're in the shower. You might just be getting up from the toilet. Like, well, come on. I guess we go. You have gotta, to eat those sometimes. We got we gotta do. That's you know. What I mean, that's it's a big lump sum of money. You're gonna be living on high alert though. You can, yeah. You can. You, but it's all you always gotta live like that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like you always gotta be on high alert. You never know. There's certain things that happen in the world nowadays. That's just. It's out of pocket. Out of pocket and not not right. And you guys, no. so you just certain, you know what I mean? Certain situations that we've seen over the past few years has not just been this. No. It's not been So right. might as so well take like, the 15 mil. Yeah, come on, Derek Henry. I guess but let's, let me see you in the shower if I have to. <laughs> like, if I got to run into you, you know what I mean? Sometimes it'd be like that. It happens to the best of us, I guess, these yeah. days. All right, Keeble, we need to get your jersey up on the wall, first of all. Yeah, I'm all right here. I thought about it. It's in the garage. I got it for you, though, gang. Yeah, well, maybe I'll see you before you leave. Yeah. <sighs> Okay, well, I'm going to wrap it up here. Anything else you want to say to Bring the Juice Nation? Uh, you know, keep supporting the Bring the Juice, you know what I mean? Mm. Everybody lock in, mm. and let's make it, let's blow it up even more. Mm. Get your piss hot, team. Yeah. Uh, fire me up. Another great episode of the Bring the Juice podcast. Be sure to follow Keyshawn Johnson on all the socials. Check him out this season, wherever he's at in the NFL, right now with Atlanta. And uh, I have nothing but you're going to do great things, brother. And thank you for saying yes for being in my wedding. It's going to be a great day. We're going to have to start planning that bachelor trip pretty soon. Here. It was an honor. You know, this was, this was a day to come. It, it's like a given. It's only getting better. <sighs> Trending up. Yeah. All right, y'all. Uh, make sure to bring the juice this week and fire me up. 
we gonna 